All right, first of all, President, thanks so much for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to sit down with us. I think I speak for all the students when we say we're very grateful for everything that you and Sister Tanner do for us. Talking to a lot of the athletes, they voiced a lot of their gratitude for you and Sister Tanner coming out and supporting all of our teams here at BYU Hawaii. How much have you enjoyed seeing our Seasiders in action, and why is it so important for you and Sister Tanner to come out to these games? Well, both, we enjoy it, that's one thing. We really do like doing it. It's, it's not a, we're not doing it just out of duty, but we also feel a commitment to do it to support our, our students. But uh, we, we really enjoy watching the teams play and watching our students compete, and uh, it's fun. Beyond that, I really do like to support our students. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to go to concerts and plays, and I try to go to our athletic events. I like to go and be where the students are. Mm -hmm. Last season in the PacWest Conference, they have this award for the academics of each team in the PacWest Conference, and BYU Hawaii set a new PacWest Conference record with a 3.44 cumulative GPA by all of our student athletes. You are the president of this university. I can only imagine how pleased you were with that, but how what did it mean to you to see your student athletes not only perform in their respective sports, but most importantly in the classroom? What I really like about that award is it emphasizes that they really are student athletes. And they're in that order, they're mm -hmm. students first and they're athletes second. This is, this is about having our students perform in athletics as students. And one of the things I've liked about being at this level of NC2A in the two, in the two division is that there is an emphasis on, on uh, education, on academics. So I'm very proud of our students for having set that record in our, in our division and for that accomplishment. Because that's an aggregate number. That means it's an average for all of the athletes. And you mean, it means that there are a lot of athletes who are getting even higher GPAs than that. And that's hard to do. Yeah, as an athlete when you've got a travel schedule, you've got workout schedules and practice and so forth. And uh, I, I'm just as proud as can be of these kids, just like they're as if they were my own kids. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen after they leave here is they will be using their education. That's going to be the long term value. And the, the athletics will be a wonderful memory. It'll be a wonderful thing that they will have done, but they're their education that they get from their, from their classes and their, their degrees will have the longest value and the longest lasting value for them. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're students first and then they're athletes. They've been getting it done in the classroom, but they've also been able to accomplish a lot in their respective sports. President, I got a list here. Since 2013, there's just a, quite a few things that they've been able to accomplish. Nine All-Americans, one National Player of the Year, one National Coach of the Year, a National Senior Player of the Year, a National Rookie of the Year, two runner-up finishes in the NCAA Tournament, six appearances in the NCAA Tournament, six conference championships, 79 all Pac West selections, and 21 other individual awards in the Pac West Conference. Quite a list for only three years. How impressed are you with what BYU-Hawaii well, has been I able to do? Well, I need to put my buttons back on because I'm bursting my buttons. With <laughs> the academic performance accomplishments and, and the, the awards are winning. I'm, I'm thrilled for our kids to have success on the field on the pitch and on the, in the you know on the in the courts and all the places they perform as well as in the classroom, I couldn't be happier for them. Uh, we're in our last year of this year, and I told the teams, uh, and I told the other presidents of the universities, I said we're going to put competitive teams on the uh, and uh, on the uh, against you. We'll play against you, and we hope we'll beat you every time, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I want our kids to have that success uh, as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud and pleased for them. With winning and having all these accomplishments and doing so well as our Seasiders have done the past few years comes national and international exposure. Yeah. How important is it for you to emphasize how important it is to represent this school because our athletes are being recognized internationally and yeah. nationally? Well, so the most important recognition that comes to the university is not just the uh, the um, athletic performance or winning the winning the championship the the most important th thing thing that comes to the university is when our athletes uh, represent the university by who they are and not just by how well they perform and so what I like are the stories that I sometimes hear that you know your kids were really good sports or they they just they behave themselves in a way that 
capture the attention of the other coaches, the other, the other fans, or the media. Um, we have one of our, our students who's a, a student athlete on the soccer team that has captured a lot of, it, a lot of attention uh, for the work she's doing back in the country of her birth. She's grown up in the United States now, but in Ghana, and the work in, in the, the, that she's done to prepare, to, rather to provide a, an organization that's helping get uh, kids, rescue kids from what they could potentially be involved in, you know, slavery or sex trade or just so many hardships that they'd, that they'd faced there. And she's, she's reached back into that country of her birth and is doing wonderful things like that. And so we got a lot of attention for that. And that, that pleases me even more than, the, than winning the championships when our kids are doing great things and representing themselves, the university and the church. Not only the kids but the and the athletes that have been performing, but we've had quite a few good coaches as well, just to name a few. Coach Porter, Coach Wagner, Coach Navalta, Coach K. We've had a lot of really good coaches here who have not only affected their student athletes, but have represented the school in a way that has brought a lot of respect to this university. How pleased are you with the work that our coaches have done with student athletes and making impact in the community? So that's another area where I, I like what we're doing here. And it's more a throwback to the old days of the athletics. In the old days, coaches were all about mentoring and not just about winning. Winning is important for a coach. And those coaches you just mentioned are some of the winningest coaches in the history of athletics here, and in some of them even in the, in the, the whole con in the country of their, and in their sport. But the idea of a coach earlier was that the coach would be a moral influence on the kids. He'd be a mentor, he'd be a father figure, or she would be in their lives. And, and, they would, and, and the reason for athletics, that athletics were uh, developed in, in universities, was not just about exercise, it was partly about that, but it was also about character building. And so what I like about the stories of those coaches is the way they've helped form young men and women of character, of, of learning to compete, but also learning to be wonderful adults and go through their lives with a coach who was a role model. That to me means a whole lot. Yeah, and this past summer BYU Hawaii was afforded a great opportunity to host a few basketball camps. Two-time league MVP Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors organization came and held a one-week camp. Yeah. Jabari Parker, a fellow Latter-day Saint, also came, had a one-day basketball camp. Lots of campers, lots of families and parents were exposed to BYU Hawaii. How did these events help People get to know BYU Hawaii, its mission, its standards, and also help introduce people to the church because this is a church school. Yeah, well, I think the camp with Steph Curry worked really well. I wasn't here on campus, but from all the reports I heard uh, back from Steph and the Golden State Warrior organization and from our people here, it sounded like it went well, and I was grateful for that. Uh, he's a class act. Um, and a person of faith and of principle, and, and I like that. I like associating our university with those kinds of people. Same with Jabari Parker, of course. So, uh, you know, I, I hope it had a good publicity value for us. I hope it was good for the kids who, was, who were here. I hope they felt something here. It seems like, from what I heard, that the coaches, some of whom uh, were participating in the camps, some of whom didn't have any experience with us and with the church, and. Or, or any of the BYUs really came away with a good impression, and that's great. We like that. We like it when people visit and when we, they get to know us and feel who we are. And in this case, uh, those two athletes, I think they are—they represent themselves and, and and the sport really well because they're good people, and that fits what I've just been saying. Yeah. Uh, I always told my kids it's import more important to be good than to be great. Uh, in God's eyes. Goodness is greatness, and so that's I like I like bringing people here who are great in their sports or in their music or in their academically. But m most important, uh, I like I like people who have that moral greatness because I think in the ultimately that's what God really cares about. That's what I care about most. Mm -hmm. Back in 2012, I was a member of the men's basketball team. We had quite a few players on our team who weren't members of the church, two of which actually were introduced to and got baptized and became members of the church. I've talked to quite a few athletes who have came to this school not knowing much about the church, but because of the great examples, players, coaches, students, 
they were introduced and very grateful for the church. Our, when our athletes travel, they've been traveling to China, they travel to the mainland. They travel with BYU Hawaii on their chest, kind of like how our missionaries do for the church. How have BYU Hawaii athletics been able to spread the gospel around the world? Well, I think that's a natural function of the fact that we have more non-LDS come that are athletes than we do non-athletes because they're recruited and, and they come here. And then they, they, they feel something when they're here. They associate with people that, uh, that, that impress them with the values that we have. And so it, it's always a pleasing thing when people uh, choose to, to make covenants and uh, follow Christ. As, uh, and of course that's a wonderful thing. We're, we're thrilled for them. That isn't why they, we recruit uh, uh, people, but it's a wonderful benefit that will have a, lot more, a longer lasting influence on their lives than of course anything else might have. We're, we're thrilled by that. Whether they're athletes or not they're athletes, it's a great thing. Uh, back in 2015, in your first devotional with the students, you reiterated President David O. McKay's vision for the school. You said, quote, I see students who will go forth spreading peace internationally. BYU Hawaii recently has been featured on ESPN twice. There's been two articles which have been published in the nation, and also a little bit of international coverage as well. How do you feel like BYU Hawaii Athletics has been able to complete that vision that President McKay had and that you also have of spreading peace internationally and making a difference in the world? Well, our athletes, like some of our other programs, our Enactus program and others, have gotten a lot of attention uh, when they do well. And that always helps us if it's good attention, if it's for athletes that are, you know, themselves outstanding, upstanding young men and young women. It, it, it's, it's always good to get good press, isn't it? More, better than, mm -hmm. than bad press. But um, I'm proud of our kids, our kids that, uh, that shine with light. I, I also talked about them as being light bearers. Uh, that they go forth from this, they'll, they'll have an experience here that will, will touch their lives and they'll take that, that aloha spirit, that sense of living in a, in a community where there's love and there's light and there's, and there's a fellowship across cultures and they'll take that and they'll go back to their home countries or to around the world and they'll be good examples. That's what President McKay had in mind for all the students. I think our athletes do that. I think all of our students do that. We're, we're happy for it. We're happy for the ones that have the, you know, the cameras turned on them. We're happy for the ones that do it quietly that may not have any publicity, but, but God sees them. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. Yeah. All right, President, before I let you go, I have to ask, if President Tanner could join any of our teams here at BYU Hawaii, which team would you choose and why? Well, I played a little basketball in, in high school, so I'd probably, if I had any chance to help the team, would probably be basketball. I like basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I like defense especially. I was pretty aggressive on that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, uh, so that's probably what I'd do. I'm pretty small for basketball nowadays, but I played football and basketball in high school. I like, sports always came kind of easily for me. Mm -hmm. And so I like sports. I like playing sports. Um, so I might play soccer too. I, I, that, to me, that's a really fun sport. I like the running. I like the conditioning of it. I'm better at a sport where I'm chasing the ball, so I'm not thinking about just running. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I admire, the, I admire our track, our, our, our cross-country teams. In some ways, that's the purest of the pure sport. You're just out there running, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's a, um, but for me, I always, I always wanted to chase the ball, and so I'd probably be basketball or, or soccer. All right. Well, thank you so much, President, again, for sitting down with us, and we look forward to seeing you support our Seasiders in 2016. I like supporting them, and I go Seasiders, and for all of the others that may be seeing this, come out to the games. We need you. <laughs> we need you there. Okay. Thanks, President. All right.